Greetings to you once again, my brothers and my sisters in Christ Jesus. Yeah, no, I told you guys we'd start getting some music um, going here at some point in the near future. So uh, that is some music from Xavier FX, part of um, our brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world that do amazing things as God gives them the gifts, the talents, the abilities, and um, you know we. We all share among each other and encourage each other in the things that are coming up because there's so much that's happening right now in the world and happening in the world around us. And so, yes, there is a lot on the horizon right now. There's a lot that's taking place. Um, and, you know, right now, one of the challenges that, that we continue to have as a body of Christ, as followers of Jesus, you know, in a world that seems to be coming apart at the seams is that you're surrounded with people that are losing their, their mind, that are losing their direction, that are losing their focus, because they never had it. You know, when people put their trust in the world and in the world system, when that system begins to come unraveled, when the things that they trust in begin to um, no longer have the, uh, um, the effect that it once did. Quick change here. There we go. When things start to fall apart... <clears throat> They, they start to go crazy. Scriptures talk about how men's hearts will fail them when they see the kind of things that are coming on the earth in such a time as this. And one of the things that comes apart is um, the very system that they put themselves into in the first place. You know, um, I, I read a quote a long time ago that said it's a, it's a really awful feeling for somebody to spend their entire life climbing a ladder just to find out that I was leaning against the wrong building. So when they've been building and they've been going and they've been trying to climb up in that system and then they find out that it's based on a lie, that it's based on a deception, that it's based on falsehood, then now what do they do? Well, you know, in the case in the book of Acts, when it was, um, when it was uh, Stephen and when he broke down for them, uh, you know, very beautifully in... Uh, in Acts chapter, um, Acts chapter 7. And, you know, he starts off and he's, you know, he's being pulled up before the council, um, you know, and then as he's got them all there and he starts off in verse 2, and he says, Men and brethren, the fathers hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham. And when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charon. Now, in that situation, when he starts breaking down from that point, the journey of Abraham, the journey of, of Joseph, the journey of Moses, the journey of, of different people that were all part and parcel of the faith. And then when he gets to the closing of that, you know, you know, when he says, How be it the most high dwell not in temples made with hands in verse forty eight, as saith the prophets, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool, what house will ye build me, saith the Lord, and what is the place of my rest? Hath not my hands made all these things? When 51, he says, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ear, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which shewed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now the, whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Who hath received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it? 54, verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him <clears throat> with their teeth. But as, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing in the right hand, of, standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord, and they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they <clears throat> stoned Stephen, calling upon, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus. And then they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So here you have a situation where, um, you know, the history is broken down. The history of what the world has been, 
um, the history of what the faith has been. And yet now you have him standing before those that are the rulers, the religious re- rulers of the day. And he then breaks it down and says, is there anybody, you know, which of your prophets have your fathers, <clears throat> have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain at them which shewed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have now been the betrayers and murderers. So, you know, throughout, and they, <laughs> they didn't have an answer for that. In fact, their answer was to do exactly the thing that their fathers did, was to go kill Stephen. So, you know, right after that, they show that they're children of, because in you, Babylon, mystery, mystery Babylon, mother of harlots, in you lies all the blood on the prophets. So what do they do? They do exactly what it is that their fathers do. Jesus called them out on this too. He said, if, you, if Abraham was your father, you would do the things that Abraham did. But, you know, you do the things that your father did, which is... You know, steal, kill, and destroy. So we, so those that are the fathers, he will draw unto himself. What, what Jesus said to Peter was when he asked him, who do people say that I am? And then he said, who do you say that I am? Specifically, it comes down to you. And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And when he said this to him, what, did he, what was the revelation? He said, blessed are you, Peter, because flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father... Uh, who is in heaven, he's the one that revealed this to you. Now, it is Christ in you, the revelation of Christ in you, the hope of glory, that is the that is the foundation and the bedrock of our faith. Because right after, you know, Jesus said, you know, that to Peter, you know, that on this rock, what rock? The rock, the foundation of the revelation of who Christ Jesus is. On that rock, you know, I will build my church. Not Peter the person, because Peter was a tiny little pebble that was tossed to and fro as he was even getting his feet under him. But it was on the revelation, the foundational truth of who Christ Jesus is. That is what the church of the living God is built upon. And when that rock (coughs) comes and smacks into the world and the world system, they go crazy. Now, one of the things that is part of, that is also leading into the complete collapse of the old system and the old paradigm is in the old day, they would take somebody like Stephen out back and kill him. They would take somebody like John the Baptist and make sure that he's out there in the middle of the wilderness and he can't even have a voice and people have to go out and they have to go through all this hardship just to even be able to hear the words. But now the words are getting out. Now the words are getting through. Now the voices are getting through. Now the Spirit is coming upon all flesh, you know, good and bad, and, um, and in the process of that happening, in the process of that taking place, you, you're now seeing those that are aligned with the Spirit of God, that they're moving forward in their gifts and their callings and their abilities. And those that are not, they're coming apart because they're misaligned. And so as that power comes through, that, that also then uh, creates uh, a complete collapse within themselves. And they can't turn it off with with. With Stephen's case, they just got, they started screaming and they start trying to blot him out. But in our case, and in the time we live in now, the volume just continues to increase. Um, I'm sure you guys can hear in the background, because it's early morning in Sri Lanka. That's where we are right now, broadcasting this one. You can hear the birds waking up and you can hear the, um, the chanting taking place at a distance as well. Um, all of this is part and parcel of... Um, the dynamic of this country. But everywhere that we are, um, God is doing what he's doing. And for us, for the follower of Christ, your, your position while you're here is to align yourself with the Spirit. Allow the Spirit of God to flow through you. Allow for God to lead and direct and guide your words, your thoughts, your intentions, your heart, um, his direction, his purpose in you. And even, you know, like Stephen, the the struggle that he had there too was that in the process of, yeah, he, he told the truth. He said the message. And was that truth and was that message received well? No. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to destroy him. And they did. But also too, in the middle of that, there was a seed that was planted in a man named Saul, who later became Paul. And, you know, the blood of the saints, you know, oftentimes becomes the seed of, of, the, of just the growth of what God does because so often through the things that we go through 
And that is oftentimes when people see that and they recognize that there's something different there, that's a lot of times the way, too, that those that are on the wrong side that are destined to be gods, they get woken up by that. You know, and so that's, you know, Saul, who became Paul, later on had the exact same experience when he was tossed in jail in Acts 16. And uh, God shook the prison cell and the and everybody's bands were loosed. And the jailer, who would have lost his life if one single prisoner escaped, was about to kill himself because he thought everybody got away. And, um, and in that situation, where Paul had his back ripped open um, by being flogged and he's sitting there in the jail, and he could have easily just you know, let this guy go off himself for what he had done to him. But he said, no, 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 don't do it. You know, we're all here. Well, you know, God will quicken you just the same way that Stephen was quickened. Um, and even Stephen in the time where he was being slain, even Stephen in the time where he was being killed, um, still intercedes on behalf of those that are trying to hurt him and trying to kill him and are killing him. And he does that on, on, their, um, on their behalf and for the sake of their souls. See, here's the other thing too, is because part of it was that he knew that his life was not in this world. He knew the truth and the reality that he was in the world but not of the world. And those that are in the world and are of the world, those ones, they are, they're on a sinking ship. And they, the only hope that they have is repentance, is turning to God, is to, is to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. And if they fail to do that in the short window that they have, then they're lost. And that's a hard thing and that's a hard reality but there is no other way off of this sinking ship. And if there was another way off of this sinking ship, then there would have been no reason for Jesus to come here and die in the first place. The Son of God would not have had to come onto this earth, be manifest in the flesh, go through the things that he did if there was another way. You know, who of us would choose to have our child killed in order to save the world? Is there a single one of us that would be a loving parent that would, you know, that that would be our choice? You know, would we, would we not look for and try to find another way if there was another way? But the reality of the scriptures, the reality of the fact that without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sins. Without a, in a legal sense, the necessary um, sacrifice, the necessary substitution, necessary restoration for the offense. See, what Jesus did too in the realm of the Spirit was that he also dealt with legally that which needed to be dealt with. So when we were born into this world, we were born here as uh, under a slave system. And so in order for us to be redeemed, the debt had to be paid. The debt bondage in the realm of the Spirit had to be paid. So what Jesus did was he paid the, the debt, the spiritual debt that was required for my salvation, for your salvation, for our restoration, that had to be done. And, without, and nobody could do it. Nobody could do it in and of themselves. When we talk about um, the issue of human trafficking on this show and on other shows that we're involved with and, uh, <clears throat> and, the, and the 2020, uh, Human 2020 on the 20th of every month, you know, we, we've... When we talk about that, a lot of the um, people that are trafficked around the world are trafficked in debt bondage. You know, that's a big, big part of it. Now, in that process of utilizing, um, you know, a, a system like that, they get people into a situation where they can never pay it off. And so they're always stuck in something until they die. Well, that, you know, where do they think they, where do you think they learned that from? The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's, that's part of the world system, is to get everybody indebted. Because there's also reality. There's a scriptural reality, which is that the borrower is servant to the lender. So when the borrower gets into a particular position, they are stuck and they're indebted to and servant of the lender. So the world has structured the setup in order to get people indebted to it in order to keep them now slaves to them. And so there's a legal setup in the realm of the spirit that they've done. Now, obviously it's predatory. Obviously they take advantage of the most weak and vulnerable among us in order to be able to do that. 
but it's still predicated on something. It's still set up based on a certain understanding. Now, when Jesus Christ did what he did for us on the cross, what he did was he paid it off. And full payment was made so that you and I could be set free. Full payment was made so that you and I could be able to, um, to go forward now free. So the rest of your time here in this life, you don't owe the world. You don't owe the world system. Now, there are natural laws in place. So in, in, in the natural, yeah, if you go into material debt, then you may have to deal with things on a natural level. But on the realm of the spirit, the debt has been paid. <clears throat> on the realm of the spirit, you are free. And if you follow the principles in the word, you can also be free too in, this, in the sense of natural debt as well because God has given that to us. In something like the book of Proverbs, God has given us that. You know, where you, you have instructions on how to live a successful life, but you've got to participate in that. You've got to apply these things. You know, so one of, one of my, you know, just statements I make sometimes is, you know, knowledge without application is worthless. I mean, you've got to apply what you know. So when God says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of, of God, who gives to all men generously without finding fault. So you need, so one is when you recognize that you, you, you have a lack and, and the fact that the scriptures also say, also say as well, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So we know that the people of God perish because they don't know, because they walk in ignorance or they walk in a <clears throat> misunderstanding of the word or a misunderstanding of the truth. So we need that revelation of the truth and we need to ask God for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. But within that process, once God reveals something to you, you need to apply it. You need to do it. You won't see the benefit of the word of God in your life without application. Now, this is also where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit will um, give you the power to do what you can't do in yourself apart from Him. See, this is where when God gave the, the, the early church the instructions, He said, wait in Jerusalem until you receive the gift that the Father has promised of the Holy Spirit. Because when he, and, and He's going to give you the power. He's going to give you the power to be a witness. He's going to give you the power to do the things that you can't do in yourself. So we walk in the spirit of the living God. We wait for that. And then as we wait on him, you know, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. They won't go weary. They'll, they'll, they'll walk. They won't faint. You, you will have the power necessary to do the things that God has given you to do. And our tasks in the realm of the Spirit. See, here's the other part of this too. God does have work for us to do. There is a reason for us to be here. But the works that we do are the things that the Father gives us to do, not the way that the world does. So your work in the realm of the Spirit, it may be to pray. Your work in the realm of the Spirit, it may be to go somewhere and to give somebody a kind word that just needs it. That you may save somebody from killing themselves or committing suicide. Our work in the Spirit, I mean, here, this right now, this is a work in the Spirit. God gives us this to do, so we do this. You know, your work in the Spirit may be, um, it could be a thousand things. It can be just sometimes just to exist can be your work in the Spirit. Just to be a placeholder in a wicked and corrupt generation where a lot of things are put forward that are anti-Christ. And you just to live as a living example of something that's real and something that's true and something that is different. And something, and that fact, and the absolute eternal fact that there is another way, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and you don't have to go the way of the world, that there is a way out. That in and of itself is powerful, and that in and of itself is, um, is maybe the very work that God has for you to do. And you got to finish your race, and you got to finish your race strong. Now, for us, um, Yes, it's a challenge to be here. What did Jesus tell us? I mean, Jesus gave us a heads up. You know, he did. We're not here under any kind of illusion. Um, you know what he, he what he told us too was that um, that you know we're going to have tribulation. Let's go to this. Let's check this really quick. John chapter sixteen and <clears throat> verse. Uh, 
Let's see here. Let's go to... Okay. Verse 24, John chapter 16. Here too, Jesus speaking, Have ye asked nothing in my name? Ask, and it shall, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak to you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. And that day, at that day, ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and I believe that I came out of God. I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and I am come into the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Are ye, now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. But this, by this we believe that thou comest from God, forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? <clears throat> Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I'll read that last part again. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So now, for you, brothers and sisters listening in this day, in the world you are going to have tribulation. You're going to have trouble. You're going to have persecution. You're going to have gang stalking. You're going to have false accusation. You're going to have people that are going, you're going to speak the truth. And just like Stephen, they're going to want to take you out back and kill you. In the world, you're going to have people that are going to shadow ban you on the internet. You're going to have people that are going to leave, uh, just, just try to derail you and put snarky comments from anonymous uh, handles on your podcasts and on your websites. You're going to try, you're, in this world, you're going to have info, you're going to have tribulation of betrayal. You're going to have people that are going to try to get close to you with honey, and then they're going to turn around and stab you in the back. In this world, you're going to have tribulation. You're going to have, even as Jesus said, sometimes the, the enemies are, that you have will be even the members of your own household. In this world, you're going to have tribulation where people are going to try to attack your health. They're going to try to attack your mind. They're going to try to use all sorts of manners to, to destroy you and to trouble you and to give you, to make your time here as horrible as possible because of who you are. Jesus said, if they do these kind of things to me, you know, and I'm the master, you know, well, you're, if you're a servant, you're following after me, just be encouraged because they already tried to do this stuff to me. So we know that this is part and parcel for the course. We know that this is part of the journey. So now here's the thing. Um, the victory and the overcoming is in Christ Jesus, because that's what he said here. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You know, Jesus is the finishing point of their system. He is the finishing point of their ability. He's the finishing point of their authority. He's the finishing point of their ability. And you have to also understand, too, that the, that when he said that all authority on heaven and earth has been given unto me, therefore go, make disciples of all nations. Now, when we, when he gives us, because he, get, because he has all authority on heaven and on earth, so the authority, the, the greater authority is there with him. And that's the place sometimes where we, because we believe, or the propaganda, because your, your mind is constantly bombarded by the world system. The world system will always try to bludgeon you with its propaganda because it doesn't actually have, um, it, it, it doesn't have the ultimate authority. Christ is the ultimate authority. And when God speaks, everything moves, everything changes. This whole world came into being by all he had to do was speak. And now when God established legitimately the legal authority, the spiritual authority necessary 
for that establishment for us through the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus. When God did that, now the way has been also set up too for restoration, for the restoration, for the, uh, for the lost to be, brought, um, to be brought in. The power is now there. And we have a case in point in the, an object lesson in the, the liberation of the children of Israel when they're in bondage to Egypt for 400 years. You know, we see God with, an, with a strong hand and an outstretched arm um, delivering his people out of slavery. Now, that was a natural example of a spiritual reality. The spiritual reality that now has come to pass in Christ Jesus is though that the world system is completely set up to have you enslaved, to have you captured, to be able to kill you, to be able to destroy you, though the world system is set up like that, when God intervenes through Christ Jesus, they cannot hold you. They cannot keep you. They cannot keep you back and cannot keep you away from that which is real and that which is true. And if you choose to follow him, if you choose to walk this thing out, then the process of you walking this thing out is going to be your freedom, is going to be your liberation, is going to be you moving through perhaps even a desert experience and crossing you know, the impossible river, um, <clears throat> but going into a promised land. And going into that promised land, going into that which God has promised, and out of bondage and into freedom. What did Paul say his own experience was? That God delivered him out from, from bondage, from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. So Paul was delivered out of that, out of the system, out of the bondage. And once he had that, it, the rest of his time here, well, to live as Christ and to die is gain. So for us to live as Christ and to die is gain. We recognize that. We understand that. We look for that. We move forward in that. So now, as you move forward in the reality of who you are in Christ, well, you know, know also what the weapons of your warfare are. So, you know, we, we've, we've put some foundational stuff up even on faithmix.com, you know, for... People that are, um, if you're listening to this and you're new in your faith, well, first of all, you need that no man teach you because the Holy Spirit will teach you when he comes upon you. So if you wait on God, he's going to teach you everything. But also, you know, there is resources that are out there that will resonate with your spirit. <clears throat> we put some things up there on Faith Mix. And um, so, so you'll be able to, um, to utilize some of those things and you'll be able to hear some of those things. And, um, and, and read some of that material. So, but, uh, you know, people have gone out of their way to do what they can to, um, to try to help you and try to assist you. But you, you need to, um, <clears throat> you know, take up the discipline of your walk as well because, uh, you know, we're in, we are in, um, in enemy territory uh, as a follower of Christ, you are in a situation where it is a hostile st- it is a hostile state, and so God's people perish for lack of knowledge. They perish often because you know they're unaware, and you know they move on bad information. They they make decisions the same way the world makes them, but the world is just setting them up. So part and pro- part of the process for you to be able to move forward through this time and to be an overcomer is for you to listen to the voice and the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Because here's the thing, in the world, their, their entire system is set up to, to um, their entire system is set up to try to rein in on you and to try to be ahead of you and to try to stifle opportunity, to try to stifle um, you know, your ability to move forward, to, to undermine an idea, a business, uh, uh, anything that you might try to do. They're working towards that end. Now, the way that you will navigate through all of that, you've got to listen to the voice of the Spirit. And as the Spirit of God quickens you and leads you and guides you, as you are listening to His voice, He's going to give you instructions that will um, completely throw them off because <clears throat> you'll be like the wind. And the way that the, you cannot predict the wind, and the same way they, you, the world will not be able to predict you if you're listening to the voice of the Spirit. So even though they might 
try to get ahead of you and try to set you up, you won't be there. And then you'll completely confuse them in their system and in their and in their plans because you'll have already been you'll be doing things a different way. You know, there's gonna be times where God will have you just to walk away from, from something. And they're anticipating just to get you completely embroiled in to waste your time, waste your energy, waste your efforts. You know, that's another thing, too, the world wants to do is it wants to, to waste you. You know, it wants to, because what is the, the, the things that choke out the word and make it unfruitful in the parable of the sower? Well, the worries, the riches, the pleasures of this world choke it and make it unfruitful. So they want to get you wrapped up in the worries of this world, the pleasures of this world, um, <clears throat> the cares of this life. Now, there are things that need to be done in this life, and God will quicken you to be able to do those. He said, don't worry about um, <clears throat> all of this stuff. Because, he, you know, he's going to, he provides for his people. He takes care of his people. God will provide and take care of you. So don't worry about that. But they want to get you wrapped up and embroiled so that you cannot pray, so that you cannot read, so that every time that you go to try to do something, your mind is so cluttered and so filled with, um, dread and fear and and uh, and just anxiety. You know that that is that is an attack of the enemy. Now you know bringing that stuff before God in prayer is the beginning. You know so often I think we as as followers of Christ don't take advantage of the weapons of our warfare. We don't use the things God's given us to overcome. Jesus in his time he fasted. Jesus in his time he prayed. You know, the crowds would have always loved to be around him. Jesus made it a point to get away and to pray, to get away and to, to seek the Father's face. You know, you've got to do that. <clears throat> you've got to get away and seek the Father's face and pray and read and, and allow your spirit to be strengthened because that's going to quicken you in the moment of knowing what to do and how to do it. God will give you the way to go, but in order for him to be able to lead and guide you, You've got to be listening for his voice. And when he gives you something, you've got to move with that. So, you know, know that he that began a good work in you is going to carry it on to completion. Know that you live in one of the most amazing windows of the human experience. I don't even want to say time at this point, because I think even time is coming apart. You know, we're seeing, um, you know, a move into timeless time. We're seeing a dissolving even of this base reality, this what people think is the default reality, and they're realizing, wait, this is an illusion. Because everything is coming apart. You know, things that people thought were solid are no longer solid. Things that people thought were real and they were banking on are no longer real. They're starting to see through the matrix. They're starting to see through the illusion. They're starting to see through um, <clears throat> the entire um, just trap of the system if, if they have eyes to see at all. So... Now, God is going to continue forward and He's going to do His work in this time. You have a reason and a purpose for being. And so be encouraged. You know, Jesus said in verse 33 of John 16, He said, Be of good cheer. You know, I have overcome the world. Listen, you remain in Christ and let His words remain in you. You're going to bear fruit. And that fruit's going to last. You know, to Him who overcomes, you got to persist. You keep going. <clears throat> you keep going with Him. You persist, you pray, you read, you, you, you trust Him. You, you, you bring everything before Him. Because He also wants you to be a witness. He also wants you to witness and to testify, even before His throne, of the things that you've seen, the things you've experienced. Your life is a living testimony. And it's a living testimony even against this world and the world system. It's an indictment against them. Because of, of you, though you've done good, They've shamefully treated you. They've misused you. They've abused you. You know, that's, that is, you know, that is on them. That's not on you. So don't own it. Instead, you cast your cares upon Jesus Christ, upon Him, because He cares for you. Be anxious about nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplication, make your request known unto Him. When you cast your cares upon Him, take upon yourself then His yoke, for His yoke is easy and His burden is light. You know, you want to uh, <clears throat> you you want to walk in the truth. You want to walk in the reality of what is true and what is real. And you don't <clears throat> want to spend 
and waste your life in the illusion. So, yeah, no, everything is, is getting amazing. Um, hey, so we love you guys. Drop us an email, faithmix at gmail.com. You can say hi there. Um, you know, we're, we're digging uh, the Spreaker thing. It's uh, making things a bit more efficient for us. And, um, you know, we're going to... A lot, lot of things on the horizon, so stay tuned. Um, you know, keep on keeping on. We love you guys, and um, yeah, we'll catch up with you again sometime soon. And yeah, everything's waking up in Sri Lanka. You can hear it now. So <clears throat> with that, we love you guys. All right, we'll talk to you again sometime soon. God bless you. Bye.